worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in a mist. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Working in this place, I worship you, Kradize Vushe Prahandas. You are here, moving in I worship you, I worship you. You are here. Working in this bliss, Kabru di Vahanda Shapra Dabaya Dabadaba Saraba. We make a miracle work, a promise key, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Barada bo shantala kapaliada. I worship you. You are here. Karabado sibrahandos. Shevi liki pahanda ski brosha pridi Grado zilifika pandos Brada do shapri iko brunda bale koduske Turning lives around I worship you I worship you Oh Jesus thank you Lord you are mending every heart, every broken heart. Brado Zali Caprando Shapridi Skobrudi Vahandus. We make a miracle work, a promise keep, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are we make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Kabara da Boshata. Do it all. Jesus. Kabradaba, you wipe away our tears. Keli divosha prahanda. You are the answer to it all, to it all, to it all. Jesus. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Yeah. We make miracle work, promise deep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Oh, brada do jiva la disa, ne crudi vali co brunde visalu caprahandis, redo vuliki pahandis, rado chaprahanda, gridu zaro vilisi caprahandos. Gredo Vali Caprudi Zeluko Shaprahanda. Mm. I worship you. I worship you. Kido di la Rosali. Meligo Brudi Veli Dozi Brodi Deke Brude Bosheri. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. It's always a joy and a privilege to be with you once again to share God's word with the people of God. Hallelujah. I trust that you are doing well. 
I trust that church was nice today. I'm sure you had a wonderful time at church. I know that with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on. I'm excited to be here. I feel blissful in my spirit. And I know that with God, all things are possible. Child of God, I don't know where you are in your life, the stage at which you find yourself. But I know that with God, all things are possible. Now, the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. Are we together? Uh, the, the fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. Hallelujah. Now, you remember that I said in the month of October, we are looking at elevation. We are looking at upliftment. We are looking at upgrade. We are looking at new dimension. We are looking at advancement. Hallelujah. Now, I told you that as a child of God or every human being, we believe in advancement. We believe in education. We believe in upliftment. We believe in elevation. Are we together? So I, I said that or throughout uh, the past month or throughout this month, I will, I've been teaching on elevation, the things that you need to do in order to receive elevation. Are we together? So you have to know that there are things that you need to do in order to be what elevated hallelujah and i use jesus as an example because i have no greater and bigger example to use than jesus hallelujah how jesus was elevated with the name that is above every name so child of god whoever you are in your business uh in your ministry uh, as a music director, as a choir leader, as a journalist, as a presenter, whoever you are, you need elevation. You desire elevation. You crave for elevation. You yearn for elevation. And I've been teaching that it's not wrong to desire for elevation because when you even give birth to a child and the child doesn't grow from age zero to age one, you become ag agitated in your spirit. You become mad at, a, at the child because you don't know why the child is not growing. You will seek their attention of all the best doctors that your money can get and 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 you you just want your child to be elevated you want your child to grow up that is the same thing with believers that is the same thing with god now when god, whenever god sees us he sees us as children or his people that must be what elevated that must be uh, 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 catapulted from one level to another hallelujah and i've been teaching on stagnation you know stagnation is one of the disadvantages to what elevation if you stagnate in life you will not be elevated are we together and you must el be elevated i must be elevated we must jump from one level to another so in any endeavor any field or industry you find yourself uh, a governor a policeman um, an army general a policewoman a presenter a journalist whoever you are you need to be elevated you must jump from one rank to another or you must walk yourself from one rank to another hallelujah child of god let's share a word of prayer come on le crodi valu ke bouche prehendes redu veli ki tu bruka bouche frede heavenly father the ancient of days the i am that i am god we thank you for tonight we thank you for your glory we thank you for your grace that is available to us we pray that as we have gathered unto you alone, have your way in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you anoint those lips of clay. Grant me utterance. Grant me the ability to speak your mind to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that you give me precision of word. I pray that wisdom will come to somebody. I pray that enlightenment will come to somebody. I pray that knowledge will come to somebody at the end of this broadcast. Father, I'm ready. Please use me to be a blessing to your people in the mighty name and matchless name of Yeshua HaMashiach we pray with thanksgiving amen hallelujah praise the Lord hallelujah praise the Lord so um, tonight uh, I'm sure today is the 30th of uh, October and it will be our last broadcast in the month of October for elevation because this month is our month of elevation our month of upliftment our month of upgrade whatever we are doing we must be what upgraded hallelujah so I'll be doing a wrap-up I'll be putting everything together uh, today because uh, we have barely a day to move into the month of what november hallelujah so before we move into the word of god and i teach you what i have for you today uh, i'll also be doing a recap of whatever i have talked i'll be doing a recap of whatever i've talked i mean uh, uh to the benefit of those that have lost 
or they couldn't follow properly you can go back to my page and go through the videos and the prayer points as well hallelujah so i'll be doing a recap and then i'll be doing a top up the last part of what uh, elevation the teaching on elevation but before then if you have not shared this broadcast you have not done well at all please start sharing the broadcast now click on the like button click on the love button and then share the link to bless as many people as we can let's take the song and whilst we are taking this song with all due respect do well by sharing this broadcast on WhatsApp, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Snapchat, on Facebook, uh, uh, um, SMS, however you want to send it, please just send a message to somebody. Tell them Blissful Word is on. We are here to study God's Word in order for us to advance in anything that we do. So let's take this song, and whilst we are taking the song, I'm sharing the video, I'm sharing the broadcast. You do the same. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Krabo Shapahanda. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell somebody the name of Jesus. It's higher than cancer. It's higher than heartbreak. It's higher than any disease. Just speak in tongues if you know how to speak in tongues. Le gradu bri di shaprando rada baba ba. Le bradu likito mandara boshata. Shara baba ba la baba ba. The name of Jesus. Karaba da 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 boshata. Le bruska brunde vilikito brado shapahanda. Manda la gadada le du zaro kabashato. Pradi zelu kaprando she pridi. Share the link to bless as many people as you can. If you have not shared the link, you have not done well, please share the link. Invite someone. Invite someone to study with us. The name of Jesus. Mm. The name of Jesus. Kabala da bashata. Rada da balaba. Lebra da balabo shata. Mando riki pa le kusha prade. Mm, How majestic is your name? Mm. Jesus, higher than all the names. Oh. King of all kings, no other name like you, Jesus. Yay, Lebrando Shapa, you are the Alpha and the Omega. The name of Jesus. name of Jesus is higher than, higher than all the names. Share the link. Please share the link. Come on, share the link. There is no other name like him. Alpha and Omega. The name of Jesus Higher than other names. He is the King of Kings. Kabarada da Bashanda la Bababala. Rodu Zali Kaprado Shaprahanda. Jesus, 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. The name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, as I was saying earlier on, we are ending our teaching on elevation, the subject elevation. So, throughout this month of October, we were looking at, or we are still looking at elevation. And today will be our last teaching on ele elevation. I'm sure sometime later, you know, we'll be passing through the, the topic elevation. But uh, subjectively, I mean, we are looking at elevation. And today will be our last teaching. Hallelujah. So I want to do a recap of the things that I have taught so far by the grace of God. So I, I was teaching or I walked us through the elements for elevation, elements for elevation. And I made mention that um, if, if you are someone that follows our page, you will know some of the things that we have studied so far. So the elements for elevation, I said, number one, elevation comes from the Lord. Elevation comes from the Lord or upliftment, upgrade, next level, advancement comes from what? The Lord. Elevation does not come from man, but comes from what? The Lord. So that is the first focal point, the first point that you must put in your mind, in your spirit, that elevation will come from what? God. So whatever you are doing Whoever you are, wherever you find yourself, in any industry you find yourself as a pastor, as a businessman, as a police officer, as an army general, as an IGP, as a governor of your state, as a politician, as a uh, whoever you are, as a journalist, you must note that elevation does not come from man, but from the Lord, from the Lord. And I shared with us Psalm 75, all the way from verse 6 to 7, that elevation comes from from the lord then number two i also said that elevation comes through man through man hallelujah so note the difference elevations come elevation or upliftment or exhortation comes from what god and number two it comes through man through man so it means that is the god that will elevate your life is god that will uh, uh, catapult you uh, from the level where you are to the next level that you desire to be or even God, the plans that God has for you, the elevation you are looking for, it will come from God, but it will come through man. So number two lesson that we have, we have learned is that elevation will come through what? Man. So in as much as you give reference to God, you must remember that God does not elevate people in, a, in an empty space or in a vacuum. God elevates people through people. So it is true that the blessing you are looking for uh, uh, will come from God, but you must know that it is tied to another man. So your blessing is tied to another man. Because as a pastor, without the church members, you cannot pastor your empty chairs away together. Um, no matter the anointing that you have, your anointing cannot work on empty plastic chairs or empty uh, whatever chairs that you have in your church. Your anointing will work on what? Human beings. And it is there that people, as the, the miracle or uh, uh, greater uh, glory comes to the people as a pastor, it is there they will witness about the grace of God upon your life. So you must note that in every endeavor, any field you find yourself, through man, elevation will come. As a pastor and as an entrepreneur, I have noticed over the years that wherever I have gotten to in my life as a pastor and also as an entrepreneur, it came from God. And number two, it came through what? Human beings. People helped me to come this far. The key you are looking for to open that door is in the hands of what somebody so number two elevation comes through man are we comes through yes man comes from god but comes through man number two then i also we also learned that number three if you want to be elevated you must learn to be what humble humility god says that he he upgrades or he honors he he promotes the humble person, but he brings down the proud person. So if you want to be elevated, whoever you are, the, the level you find yourself, uh, no matter your pedigree, your education, uh, your pastoral level, uh, you are the best journalist, the awards you have won and everything. Surely you are aiming to go higher than where you find yourself. And you must learn to be what? Humble. Humble people go places. Are we together? If you are humble, you will go places. Nobody wants to walk or wear 
work with what proud people so if you want to be elevated you must learn to be what humble praise the lord then i think number three we also studied that through knowledge elevation comes if you study now any field that you find yourself or any upliftment that you want in your life you must have knowledge about that level as, as a single woman a single uh, a man uh, a bachelor spinster or whoever you are if you are not married you want to be married you must study things about marriage before you get there now if you want to be a bank manager you must study i told you that uh, jesus as powerful as he was or he being god he still humbled himself and at the age of 12 he went through study studies he studied the scriptures from age what 12 as a pastor you must study you must study so knowledge will take you far knowledge what upgrade your life knowledge will advance your life you you see favor can take you to places but without knowledge you will be dropped out or you will be what brought below are we together as a pastor as i'm seated right before you if you are in my room or my library you will see the tons of books that i have in my library that i read them i study them even to have even though i've been to the university i've been to the bible college and whatever i've been to uh, one month seminars courses i've done whatever whatever i still study and you must still what study because learning is for the living not the dead when you keep studying you keep advancing because the more you study so now by the grace of god you can even study online you can study right in your house you can study online you can study a lot of things a lot of things that you need to what study so knowledge also what brings elevation you must have what knowledge uh, wherever you find yourself you must have what knowledge if you you uh, 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 you are a businessman. You need to study more about what business, how to manage uh, workers, how to manage customers. You must study all this, and 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 it doesn't matter your level of education. Don't look at it. But if you are ready to be elevated, if you want your product and services to reach the corridors of power, to 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 cut across uh, the boundaries of your country, you must study. You must study the countries that you want your business to get to, your product and services to get to. To. I mean, you must study. So you need knowledge. You need knowledge in every field, in every endeavor. You must study. Jesus studied from age 12 all the way to age 30. Solid 18 years of study before Jesus started ministry. So it means that before you come out with products and services, before you tailor a brand for somebody or you tailor solutions as an entrepreneur in order to bring money into your life, to bring fulfillment, you need knowledge. So in any field you find yourself or any upgrade, upliftment, advancement that you are aiming at you must have what knowledge you must study now you must always learn and you must always unlearn and you must always relearn so study is not for the dead or knowledge is for the what the living and i also said that you need wisdom 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 is the principal thing bible says that we should get wisdom we should get knowledge so you need wisdom as well you need wisdom to maintain balance you need wisdom wisdom sorry to stay focus you need wisdom to to go through the issues of life you need wisdom to be a cutting tool you need wisdom in everything that you do you need wisdom bible says in the book of james that if we lack wisdom we should ask of the lord are we together so the best person the best being to give you wisdom is god so you need what wisdom for upliftment Anything that you are doing, you need what? Wisdom. You need to be wise like a serpent. You need to be wise when to attack, when to approach, when to take a step. All will be guided by wisdom. You need wisdom. Child of God, you need wisdom. You need wisdom as a wife. You need wisdom as a husband. You need wisdom as an entrepreneur. You need wisdom whoever you are. Now, and no one is wiser than the other. You must seek wisdom. Seek it from the Lord and you seek it from other people as well. You need wisdom. And I also mentioned that sacrifice, sacrifice. There is no advancement without sacrifice. You must learn to sacrifice. Jesus came to sacrifice in order for us to be saved. So every advancement, every promotion, every upliftment comes with what sacrifice you must learn to sacrifice if you're somebody that you don't know how to sacrifice for things that you want then come on i bet you you ain't gonna get it you ain't gonna get it you must learn to always sacrifice you must sacrifice to get something are we together 
That is it. So you must learn the spirit of what? Sacrifice. Or you must inculcate into your spirit the spirit of what? Sacrifice. Jesus is our sacrificial lamb. Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 2, that is our foundational text, that Jesus sacrificed everything even though he was what? God. He became what? Man. He belittled, he humbled himself and became what? Man. Sacrificed and sacrificed and sacrificed. And then verse 9, Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 says that, Therefore God also gave him what? A name. Exalted him. Elevated him. And gave him what? A name. That is above every name. That at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee shall bow, must bow, and will bow. So it means that if you want to elevate it, if you want your business to get to a higher dimension, you must learn to sacrifice. As a CEO, you must sacrifice. As an entrepreneur, you must sacrifice. As a pastor, you must sacrifice. As a leader, you must sacrifice. As a bank manager, as a manager, as an assistant supervisor, you must learn to sacrifice. You must sacrifice for your job. You must sacrifice for your dream. You must sacrifice for your ambition. You sacrifice to study. Now, sacrifice simply means that you are doing something against your your uh, uh, um, your 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 uh, um, sacrifice means you are doing something against your will are we together it means that you are willing to get something but you are doing something against your comfort are we together sacrifice simply means you are doing something against your comfort so it means that if you want to always be comfortable you cannot sacrifice you want to be comfortable in your education you cannot sacrifice and burn the midnight candle you if you can't sacrifice to study as a university student you will not make the grades that you want to make as a pastor i sacrifice are we together you must learn to what sacrifice you must learn to sacrifice now you sacrifice for your business to to move forward you must sacrifice for your church to move forward you must learn to what sacrifice the spirit of what sacrifice must envelop you you must learn to sacrifice so any level you want to attain wherever you want to get to in life the spirit of sacrifice must must envelop you jesus sacrificed and got a name that is above every other name so child of god you want to be elevated you want to advance in your business you must learn to sacrifice you must stay awake to pray you must stay awake to have creative ideas you must sacrifice to depend on the holy spirit whilst everyone is asleep you must wake up and dine with the holy spirit you must speak in tongues and trust god to give you fresh ideas creative ideas you must learn to sacrifice so that god will speak to you about products and services god can give you dreams about products about solutions about how to tailor products and services that your business will be a cutting tool oh my god learn to sacrifice if you can't learn to sacrifice anything you ain't get anything are we together so sacrifice is one of the cardinal elements for elevation i also said obedience obedience you must be obedient to god don't think that if you are not obedient you will get something from the lord even man wants obedience so if you are obedient to god you will what advance in whatever you do because there are times that god will give you instructions through his word through his man of god even through your dream god will give you instructions there are things that god expects you to do you must be what obedient because when we read the bible philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 all the way to 10 god says or the word of god says that jesus was obedient to death obedient to death so it means that you must be obedient to your boss you must be obedient to god you must be obedient to your husband you must be obedient to your uh, uh, authorities come on you must learn to be obedient if you're somebody that nobody can control you or nobody will give you instructions for you to take then forget advancement forget elevation you ain't get anywhere you won't, you ain't get anything you are not getting anything out of this life are we together so you must learn to be what obedient obedient people go far in life obedient people go places you must be obedient to your spiritual father you must be obedient to your pastor you must be obedient to your boss you must be obedient to your leader your superior come on you must be what obedient are we together even to the point of death that's what jesus did so you must learn to be what obedient there are times that your boss excuse my language is an annoying boss my god he irritates you but you have you have uh, inculcated in your spirit to always be what obedient so you obey your boss not because of your boss but you obey your boss because you want advancement because you know that you need certain knowledge characteristics you need certain tools prerequisites 
prerequisite requirements. You need to learn certain things in the job. Maybe you are in a trade right now. You are learning something from your boss. He is an irritating boss. She is an irritating, overbearing boss. Yes, I understand. But you be obedient to that boss and learn all the technicalities and the legalities in that business. One day you will be on your own. And as you were obedient to your boss, you will learn things from him or her that will catapult you to the advancement that you are looking for. So learn to be what? Obedient. Hallelujah. God bless you. Then submissiveness. People who are submissive. Now, as a wife, you must learn to be submissive to your husband. Come on. Submissive goes with what? Obedience. So you must be what? Submissive. If, if you want to advance in whatever you do, if you want people to... Uh, 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 give you a job you want people to bring contracts to you you want people to recommend you to people you must what learn to be submissive some people are not submissive at all some of us we are not submissive at all we can't submit to authorities we can't submit uh, submit to governing powers or governing body you don't submit to anybody you are not under any control you don't talk to anybody you think you are almighty you can do everything child of god you are heading towards destruction so learn to be what submissive because it's one of the cardinal elements for advancement or for elevation so learn to be what submissive hallelujah then i said if you want advancement you must also uh, uh, depend on God's guidance God's guidance hallelujah God must guide you through the way because in this life you have not been here before you have never been on planet earth before but God who knows the end from the beginning God knows this earth he has plans for you according to the Bible he says that the plans that I have for you they are good plans thoughts that will take you to a better destination so if I'm I'm you if I were you what I only do is to seek guidance from God because God is my creator. If you agree that God created you and advancement and promotion will come from God, then you must learn to receive or go by the guidance of God. So the first place to get guidance from God is what? The word of God. Because the word of God is the first manual for life. In this life, there is no other book, there is no other word that can guide you better than the word of God. So if the word of God tells you to tithe, you must tithe. If the word of God tells you to pray, you must pray. If the word of God tells you to forgive, you must forgive. If the word of God tells you to, to love your neighbor as yourself, you must show love. If the word of God tells you to be humble, you must be humble. If the word of God tells you to be hard working, you must be hard working. If the word of God tells you to be prayerful, you must be prayerful so anything the word of god tells you you must go in the direction and the instruction of the word of god are we are we together so if you want to advance in in your ministry you want to advance in your job your uh, your art uh, 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 job your journalism job uh, your profession uh, your army something job uh, you, you can be a doctor, you can be whoever that you are, a politician, you must learn to follow the directives of God. And I told you the first manual, the first guidance of God is the word of God. And then secondly, God can direct you through revelation, through dreams, through the prophetic, through word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Are we together? So God will guide you through his word and God will guide you through his servants and God will guide you through revelation. God will guide you through the spirit of God that is within you. God's spirit is living inside of us and it is the spirit of god that will always guide you so you must always learn to commune with the spirit let me give you one of the surest way to commune with the spirit you must learn to always speak in tongues you must always learn to what pray in tongues you must always learn to speak in tongues you pray in the heavenly language are we together and that will help you to what commune with the holy spirit and he will guide you daily because the holy spirit is the voice of god god speaks to us all the time Hallelujah. God bless you. So you need the guidance of God. 
in order to what? advance. I also talked about the renewer of mind. You must always learn to renew your mind. Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 2, he says that be ye transformed by the renewing of of your mind you must always renew your mind by the word of god you must renew your mind the way you were thinking before your thoughts before if it's not helping your christian life if it's not helping your business it's not helping your marriage you must learn to renew your mind and then another point another element for elevation is prayer 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 you must learn to pray the act of prayer you must always learn to pray hallelujah you must always learn to pray a prayerful person is someone who advances in whatever he or she does because prayer transforms you transfiguration prayer transforms your life prayer renews your strength prayer causes you to, to mount up with wings as an eagle prayer causes you to soar higher prayer causes you to move higher now prayer causes you to get to dimension that your physical body cannot get to hallelujah so if you neglect prayer you cannot advance in whatever you do yes it's true you are educated you are knowledgeable you are submissive you are whatever you are you know how to do what you do best yes i understand but you must learn to pray you must learn to pray jesus said men ought to always pray and not give up or not faith are we together you must learn the art of prayer if you are a wife you are a husband you are an entrepreneur and you don't know how to pray there is a question mark you must learn to pray you want to advance as a journalist you want to advance as a wife you want to advance as a pastor you want to advance as a governor you want to advance as a politician you must learn to pray you must pray continually hallelujah so that is the recap that i'm doing so moving forward fast forward um i'm moving to what i have for you today this is just a recap of what i've talked throughout uh four weeks now so today i want to take us through the the the, the demands hallelujah the demands uh, for elevation you know if you seek to be elevated you want to advance remember it will put a demand on you my god child of god if you seek advancement don't think that it will come on a silver platter no no any advancement that you are seeking you are admiring you are aiming you are planning to get in in your endeavor your field any advancement that you want it will place a demand on you it will place a demand on you because if if you you are married and you don't have a child and you get a child it will place a demand on you as a mother it will place a demand on you as a father because now the money you bring home is not for you and your wife again but you must bring home money there is the demand that you must bring home, uh, money home for three people you the husband your wife and then your your new baby probably if you have three children then you must know that you plus your wife two plus three children making five are we together so any new level that we attain comes with a demand it places demand on us you can't just be passive about wishing you can't be passive and be wishing that oh i wish i will receive this award as the best journalist i wish i will receive this award uh, as the best singer my god my god it will place a demand on you you must be going to the studio most times to practice your music uh, you must uh, learn good vocabulary as a journalist my god as a pastor a lot of demand is being placed on me because of the higher level i want to get to so any higher level you want to attain remember and take note that it will place a demand on you number one let me show you the places that the elevations will put or the advancement you want the areas that it will put demand on number one it will place a demand on your time your time your time now child of god you want to advance in your ministry in your business in your personal job that you have started uh, as a manager as a banker it will place a demand on your time every advancement comes with what a demand on your time you see that your sleeping time will change your sleeping time will be distorted because now you are a bank manager now you have been made or your position your rank has been what raised so now if you have gone a step forward or higher your time will change your sleeping time will change your eating time will change at first before i i started blissful hour three years ago my time throughout the week or in a day the 24 hours a day that god gives me the the the, the number of hours that i sleep was at a certain 
a, a level. But now that I started Blissful Hour for three years now, child of God, my time for sleeping has changed. Now, by the grace of God, I, I started uh, my business by the grace of God as an entrepreneur. I started my business... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. My God. Okay, I'm sure you can hear me. I, I have a technical problem here, but let's go on with the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. So as I was saying, yeah, I'm sure you can hear me. So we are fixing our problem, but please hear me very well. So as I was saying, uh, Elevation will place a demand on your time. Now, as I, I became an entrepreneur that I started a, a, a business on my own, you understand, I started a, a business, uh, um, my sleeping time changed. Uh, I couldn't sleep like the way I slept before I started my own business. Never. It wasn't like that. The sleeping time changed. So you see that uh, doctors say that we must sleep eight hours a day and all that. But child of God, trust me, if you become an entrepreneur, if you become a manager, if you are being elevated to another rank, your sleeping time will change. Your eating time will change. Sometimes you will not eat early. Sometimes you will even be sitting in the train and be eating because you, are, you, you want to reach the office very early. You want to catch up with a meeting. So number one, elevation or advancement will place a demand on your time. Your time, your time, your time. It will stretch your time. There are places that it will limit your time. So don't think you have time for other stuff that you were having time like before. No, it will not be like that. There are other times that uh, there are things that I used to do before. There, there are places that at first I used to go. But because now I'm an entrepreneur, now uh, I'm, I'm a man of God. I've been called into ministry and I'm doing business too, you know. I, I, my time has changed drastically. It has changed my 24 hours a day entirely. So, child of God, you want to advance in what you do in your music career? Uh, as a nurse, you want to advance as a presenter, as a DJ, as a journalist, as a governor, as a politician, as an IGP, a president, as a king, as a queen, as a houseboy, as a gate man. Oh my God. As a driver, as a security man, as a market woman, your time will change. Your sleeping time will change. So every advancement, if you add a new product, if you add a new product, to your line of product and services in your business, my God, your time will change because now you have to strategically plan. You have to wake up at midnight, pray and plan into the day and all that. What am I trying to say? I'm saying that every new level, every advancement places a demand on your time. So don't think you'll be sleeping like first. There are some places you used to go. There are some people you hang out with. You can't hang out with them anymore. Why? Because, thank you, Jesus. So, you can't hang out with some people anymore. At first, you used to be with some friends. You go around to, to laugh, to joke. Now, you have started your own business. So, you can't go to some places again. Your time has changed. Are we together? So, child of God, every advancement will place a demand on your time. Your time. Your time. Now, watch this. As I started Blissful Hour... My, my, my sleeping pattern has changed. Why? Because three days of the week, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I have to wake up 12 midnight. Are we together? 12 a.m. midnight to be with you guys, to, to lead you in prophetic prayers. I have to pray with you. I have to lead you with prayers. I have to do teachings and all that. But before I started Blissful Hour, my time in a day was different. I was going to places. I was doing things that, you know, I thought it was good for me. Are we together? But child of God, now where I find myself as an entrepreneur and then as a businessman and also as a man of God, my time has changed. Sometimes I wake up midnight to intercede for you people out there. I must pray for all my spiritual sons and daughters, the people that send prayer requests to me whilst my children are asleep, while my family members are asleep, whilst other people are asleep. I'm called as a watch keep, uh, as a watchman, as a gatekeeper of families. God has called me as an intercessor. I, I, I intercede for people. So it, it means that my time will change. So apostle, your time will change. Ambassador, your time will change. Policeman, your time will change. You want to advance, your time will change. 
that advancement you want in your ministry. Maybe you start a church with 10 people. You are aiming to get to 20 people. If 20 people come to your church now, my God, your time will change. You will barely have time for yourself because you need to have, spend time with your wife and children if you are married. You need to spend time with your Bible. You need to spend time reading some books. You need to spend time praying. My God, child of God, what am I saying? advancement will place a demand on your time so if you are not ready to stretch your time my god my god my god if you are not ready to work on your time to sacrifice your time advancement will not come god watches all of us god knows all of us people that are not ready for their time to be stretched their time to what advance or for them to work on their time now if i say that advancement to place a demand on your time you need to be time conscious and time bound people who are late for occasions don't get advancement if you are late to the workplace you are late all the time do you think your boss will promote you never he wouldn't do that because he knows that when he promotes you as the manager of the place or as the supervisor of the place you will not come to work on time so it means that if you want to advance you must also learn to discipline your time you must be time conscious if you say 12 it must be 12 if you say 10 it must be 10 you must be what time bound and time conscious 24 hours a day you must learn to program your time as a pastor you must know when to visit your members you must know when to to do counseling uh, as an entrepreneur you must know when to think of advancing your product and services as an igp as a politician you must you must you must know i mean whatever you do you must know how to manage your time people don't manage their time properly now mismanagement of time brings uh, 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 um, retrogression it brings under development we must learn to manage our time profitably and effectively so child of god you want to advance you want to move forward in life you want your ministry to grow you must learn to manage your time you have 10 people in your church now you have only two products and services right now my god whatever you are doing right now if you want god to advance your course you want god to take you forward you must learn to manage your time because advancement will place a demand on your time hallelujah Praise the Lord. Another area that advancement will place a demand on is your talent. Your talent. Not only your time, but your talent as well. Now, by the grace of God, we were all born with God-given abilities. You are peculiar. You are unique. You, 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 are, you are strategic. You are different. You are a child of God. You are uniquely formed by God. You, you were made in the likeness and the image of God. So don't let anyone talk you into believing that you are a nobody, that you amount to nothing. No, child of God, it's a lie from the pit of hell. God has gifted you with talents. God has gifted you with abilities. Abilities. There are things that only you can do. My God, as I'm seated right in front of you, my God, my God, Apostle Wisdom, God bless you, Apostle Wisdom, all the way from Zambia, uh, I think Lus Lusaka, I don't know if I'm correct, Apostle Wisdom, God bless you, my good friend, all the way from Zambia, God bless you. Please, if you just tune in or you are still with me, please share the link. If you have not shared the link, you have not done well at all. Come on, share the link to bless as many people as you can. So, child of God, as I was saying, now God has given each and every one of us God-given abilities. So, advancement will also stretch your talent. Your talent, not only stretching your time, but it will also place a demand on your talent. There are things that you can do that I cannot do. And there are things that I can do, you can also do. You can also not do. That makes me unique and that makes you two unique. Are we together? Now, before you came to this earth, before you, you were born into existence, God wired you with talents, with gifts, with abilities. My God, your potentials are inside of you. Now, you did, there are some things you will not come to learn it on this earth. You will not learn it at the university. You will not learn it from a spiritual father. You will not learn it from anybody. It's within you. There are some things that are within me. I do them. Now, if you want to notice or identify your talent number one is for you to check the things that you do easily the things that you do without difficulty that is your talent anything that you do easily of course not bad things are we are we together not bad things that you do but good things that you do easily it's your talent are we together there are some people that when they mount up the stage to hold microphone to sing they do it easily they don't struggle that is your talent. Your talent can be singing. Your talent can be playing football. Your talent could, could be how to talk to people. 
you, you are a good talker. I mean, you can talk properly. Are we together? Some people, their talent, their talent is a, a, a beauty. How to set up people? I mean, how to beautify people? I know people, most people in Ghana over here, that they've not gone to any beauty school or whatever, but they can put one or two things together and. And, and beautify you for the camera, beautify you for people to see you as if you have gone to some cosmetic or something, something, uh, 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 beauty something. So you must learn to identify your talent. Every advancement will go along with not only your time, but it will go along with your talent. Child of God, look for your talent. What is your talent? Surely you have some talent inside of you. You have some potential that are buried inside of you. And in this life, the things around you will not bring you advancement. The first thing that will bring you advancement is your potentials, your talent. There are some of you, the way you talk, you, you, you can talk properly. You can convince people properly. You can talk to people properly. You can talk people into believing whatever you have. It means that you can be a journalist. It means that you can be a marketer. Are we together? So, some of you, your, your best talent is to what? To be able to recommend. There are some people, when they stand right in front of you, they can sell a product to you or talk about, come on, the way you even gossip about people to even believe, child of God, the way you can talk about other people for people to even believe you, it means that if you use the same ability, if you use the same ability to express yourself by what? Selling out products and services as a marketer, it means your product will go far. Yes, your product will go far. Are we together? So you must learn to identify your talent. Because it is your talent that will advance your life. It is your talent that will bless your life. It is your talent that will take you far. Are we together? Some of your talent is hospitality. Hospitality. My God. Anytime you want to function in the place of purpose. Anytime you want to function in your place of purpose. My God. In this life, it's better to function in your originality. In your place of purpose. Than functioning in the purpose of your mother. Sometimes... Mommy can wish that you should be a nurse, but inwardly, you know that when you even see blood, the blood of somebody, you want to run away. Don't leave the dream of your mother. Don't leave the dream of your father. Leave the dream for yourself. If, 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 if being a nurse is not in your DNA, it's not in your talent, it's not in your desire, it's not in your interest, being a banker, don't be a banker for somebody. My God, I have a friend, he always tells me, he said, Reverend, the way you are good at mathematics, the way you are good at uh, finance, I cannot be good like that. So my friend didn't go anywhere near what? Finance. He said he doesn't want to go anywhere near what? Finance. Do you know what he's, he's best doing? He can talk. He can express himself. My God. And such a person, you can be an MC at a funeral. You can be, oh my God, I'm teaching you some stuff here. My God, you want to get money? My God, this life, every problem that you see, any problem that you see around you, if you're a man of God, if you're an entrepreneur, whoever you are, the more you solve problems for people, the more you get money. So every problem and challenge you see around is money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that is very deep. Any challenge you see around is money. Any challenge you see around, the moment you depend on God to give you the wisdom to solve it, is, it becomes what? Money. Are we together? It brings you money. What is it? Your talent will take you to places. Hallelujah. So identify your talent. What are you good at? What do you do easily without sweat, without struggle? You don't suffer. I said somebody can pick up microphone and start singing profusely. Start singing non-stop. My God. Some people are talkative. Such a person. You can be an MC. You can be a DJ. You can be a journalist. Oh my God. It's okay. Let me end on that. I will teach on talent maybe sometime later. So advancement will place a demand on your talent. Be in your talent. Follow your lane. Follow your track. And advancement will come. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Now, advancement will also place a demand on your treasure. Your treasure. Your treasure. That is money. Not only on your time and not only on your talent, but on your treasure. Now, as a child of God, you want to advance. As a businessman, you want to advance. Your treasure, your money. You must put money into education. If you want to advance as a banker, as a manager, whoever you are, before you will be educated, you will put money on it or into it. Even learning online, you will buy data to learn. Maybe you are a manager of a small business. You have started your own school. 
Maybe God led you. You started a primary school or a kindergarten or a Montessori or something that you have started. Don't just be a manager. Don't just be a proprietress or a proprietor. My God, it will not help you. You must what? Steady. You must put treasure into advancing what you are doing. You must advance what you do. And in advancement, you want to advance in whatever you do or wherever you want to get to, you will put money in it. So it will place a demand on your treasure. You will put money into it. What you see me do online over here, it has taken money to bring me this far. Yes, I have the talent. Yes, I have the ability. Yes, I created the time. Yes, yes, I have the people. God gave me people to bless me. But one of the things that people blessed me with is to inject treasure, money into what I do. And right now, we, are, we have our own uh, 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 TV, online TV studio that I'm broadcasting from. Are we together? So advancement comes along with treasure. If you are stingy and you want to advance, my God, you will never advance. Because there are some people, before you even get to them, for them to teach you something, you must give them an, an allowance. You must give them, after they teaching you knowledge or giving you knowledge about certain things that you want to do. Maybe you don't know how to run some things, how to manage your business, how to do one or two things, how to do this, do this, do this, do this. There are some people, when you get to them, after they teaching you as an entrepreneur, as a pastor or whatever, you must learn to release what? A remuneration, money, even in the house of God. My God, we always cry to God for advancement. God, advance me. Oh. God, elevate me. Oh. God, exalt me. Oh. God, take me higher. Oh. And you are stingy. You don't want to put money in the offering bowl. Child of God, it doesn't work like that. As a pastor, I still give offering. You don't say because you're a pastor, you don't give offering. In your church, as a pastor, you must be the first person to always give offering. There are things that when they buy in the church, my God, check the Bible very well. Solomon, when they built the temple, he being their king and the man of God in that moment, King Solomon, my God, he gave treasures to the house of God before the people copied him and followed. Today, there are some men of God, they don't pay tight. There are some men of God, they don't give to the things of God. There are some men of God, they think only the church members are to, to buy the land for the church. My God, I don't believe in that philosophy. Uh, um, somewhere next month in November, in our church, in our ministry, we do annual fundraising. And by the grace of God, I don't tell myself because I'm the pastor of that branch or whatever, whatever, I don't involve myself. So child of God, you want to advance? Now, right now, if you pick up forms, as I was saying, I give offering. I, I give offering as a pastor. I sow seed. I release money. So, advancement will place a demand on your treasure. Now, if maybe you completed your college, you want to get to university so that you will be promoted in, in, in your, 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 your company or where you work. Now, if you seek to be educated, I told you about knowledge because you must get knowledge in order to what? advance as a manager. Fine. Now, when you get to the university, I'm not sure you go there with prayer and fasting. You will pay fees. You will pay money for them to teach you, the lecturers to lecture you, teach you management, teach you things, teach you a psychology, teach you a lot of things. So every advancement that we are looking for is connected or tied to treasure. You will pay money. There are some... People, you have to pay money to them before they teach you some things. Are we together? Even in the house of God, you must release money. See, for the man of God to pray for your family continually, there are times you must even release money, a seed, tight to the man of God, so that always his mind will be on you. Watch the ministry of Jesus. Come on. Martha, Mary, all those people, they were always supporting the ministry of Jesus. And Jesus didn't joke with them. So don't think that if you want to advance in life, you will be stingy. If you are stingy, you cannot advance in life. You must always learn to release treasure. Treasure. Treasure in the house of God. You must release money in the house of God. Money to people to teach you some things so that you advance. So advancement, elevation, upliftment, upgrade, next level. You want to be the bank manager? You want to be the branch manager? Whatever you want to get to, you must learn to release money because nothing comes for free. So learn to release what? Money. Hallelujah. So that is that about elevation. Then the second category is that it will stretch you. Elevation will stretch you. Don't think that because you want to be elevated, you want to advance. Uh, maybe you are a clerk or a teller in a bank. You want to be a bank manager. You want them to promote you, put you at that branch. 
My God, it will stretch you. Every advancement you want, any promotion you want will stretch you. It will stretch you. Number one, it will stretch you mentally. Mentally, in your mind, you must stretch your mental capacity. Managers don't think like workers. Mm -hmm. You got that? You want to be a manager and you are thinking like a staff. No, 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 no. If you are a staff now and you want to be the assistant manager, you must start to think like a manager. You must think like how managers think. Mm -hmm. Now, you are working for somebody. You want to start your own business. You are still thinking, thinking like an employee. No, 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 no. If you want to be a CEO, you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to start your own business, you must start thinking like an entrepreneur. You must think like a boss, like a leader. You want to move into leadership. You must think like a leader. So, uh, uh, um, advancement, promotion, elevation, next level, exhortation will stretch you mentally. You can't think like a gate man and then desire to be a bank manager. Gate man thinking does not equate or is not equal to manager thinking. No, 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 no. Think as a matured man. You are a single lady. You want to be married. You are still thinking like a senior high school girl. Meanwhile, the man you want to marry is looking for a wife, a matured woman. A woman who will not play around. A woman who is serious with marriage. My God. Come on, watch this. So advancement, promotion will stretch you mentally. You can't think like a schoolboy, and 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 you you want to get to the level of a sergeant. Uh oh, it doesn't work like that. How we together? Grido vuli basheto, ligrisko brudiva, gredu vilikita briske prahanda. Think like a manager. That level that you are thinking of getting to is good. It's nice. God is not mad at you. But child of God, it will place a demand on your mental capacity. Think like a pastor. Think like a nurse. Think like a wife. Think like a doctor. Get men are human beings. Security men are human beings. House boys are human beings. But they think according to their class. Mm -hmm. So if you think you want to be a manager, then start thinking like a manager. Start thinking like a wife. You can't get up and be cooking any nyama nyama food, hanging around, you cook, there is no salt, here and there, you don't even know how to cook and you are playing around and you are telling the man to come to your family and marry you. We, we don't play like that. You want to be a wife? Start thinking like a wife. Behave like a wife. Talk like a wife. So mentally, advancement will affect your mentality. Think like a champion. You want to be a champion? Think like a champion. You want to be a branch pastor? Think like a branch pastor. Branch pastors don't think like uh, 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 church members. No. <laughs> it's okay. Kradu Shafrahanda. Are we together? So mentally, graduate. Advance in your thinking. Psychologically, you must psychic your mind to that level that you are looking at. You want to be a celebrated nurse. Everybody should celebrate you. Hey, hey this nurse has gone, uh, has won awards. This doctor, go and ask those who have won awards. Go and ask those who have uh, reached the peak of their careers. Ask them how they think. Ask them how they talk and they will tell you. You can't talk at a lower altitude or think at a lower altitude and desire to be at a higher altitude. Woman, man, I'm talking to you. Right now, you are a wife. So think like a wife. Talk like a wife. A matured one at that. Now you have started your own Montessori school or something. Uh -uh. You can't be, my God. Bible says that walk with the wise and grow wiser. If you walk with the fool or with fools, you, I don't know the next word to use. You will fool and be fooling and be fooling. As you see me over here, there are people I don't walk with them. Not that I hate them. Because Bible commands us to love everybody but bible never tells you the word of god never tells you to make everybody your friend you want to be a wife you want them to marry you by december and you are there hanging around with all sort of ladies ladies who have four boyfriends and all that and you want to belong to one man but they belong to four men uh -uh. what are we talking about here <laughs> you you must learn to think like a champion Think like the level you want to get to. Think like that. You have started your Montessori. You must flow with people who think alike. Like-minded people. 
Don't be in the midst of people, mediocrity, people that uh, they don't think like champions. I mean, people that, that, that they, 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 oh God, forgive my language. Oh my God. Are we together? So think like a champion. Think like a prophetess. How do men of God think? How do women of God think? How do wives think? You must think like that and talk like that. Are we together? So, number two, advancement will also stretch you emotionally. Emotionally. It will stretch you emotionally. Your emotions will change. Your mood will change. As a leader, you must watch your temperament. Right now, you are the branch manager. Right now, you are in charge of your branch. Right now, you are a teller at the bank. You are a teller right now. You must manage your emotions. Somebody can re re irritate you. Maybe your wife will irritate you at home. You cannot bring it to church. You must learn how to manage your emotions. As men of God, we go through mood swings. Today, a man of God will be called to a funeral. Right two hours after the funeral, you'll be invited to a wedding program. So it means that at the funeral, I must switch my mood to cry. Switch my mood to be sad at the funeral. Then I switch my emotions and my mood to the wedding people and be happy with them. You see how it goes? So any level that you want to get to, be ready to manage your emotions. Your emotions. You must manage your emotions because advancement will affect your what? Your emotions. So learn to manage your emotions. If you are quick-tempered, learn how to manage it. Else you can't be a leader. Small thing, you are angry. And you want to be a wife? You want to be a proprietress? You want to be a bank manager? Small thing, you are angry. Small thing, you are angry. You are throwing your hands. You want to beat somebody. You want to slap somebody. My God. You want to be a branch pastor? You want to get to higher level? Manage your emotions. So it will stretch you emotionally. Number three. Advancement will stretch you spiritually. Spiritually. Now remember, any level you want to get to. Now the demons that fight church members are not the same demons that fight pastors. No, it's not the same. Because the devil is a smart guy. He will not send the demons that will fight or work against people who are church members and send the same demons to go and work against pastors. Because a pastor is a leader, a bank manager. See, the challenges you go through as a banker, as a manager, as an entrepreneur, as a president, as a governor, is not the same challenges an ordinary person goes through. So if you seek to advance in whatever you do, be ready to grow spiritually. And one of the surest ways to grow spiritually is to pray continually. You must pray all the time so that your spirit man will grow. Because if you become a president or if you are being raised to the place of the uh, um, as a chairman or board of directors or whatever, any level they raise you to, spiritually, there are attacks that will come to you at that level. And if you don't grow spiritually, that level, you will get there. But spiritually, you will be brought down. There are some conspiracies spiritually that will go on. Some people will fight you spiritually. Some people will fight you physically. See, as a prophet of God, as a man of God, as an entrepreneur, oh my God, there are battles I fight spiritually. When I was a church member, my God, an ordinary church member, forgive my language, I was not fighting those battles. But the moment God ordained me as a prophet, as a minister of the gospel, God started taking me through what? Levels and heights upon heights. I was climbing the ladder of success, having businesses, going forward in life. I realized that there were some battles that CEOs fight that workers don't fight. So, you must learn to grow spiritually. Madam prophetess, look at your level. You must develop yourself because there are some prophecies that you will give. By the time you get home, demons will be waiting for you at home. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, are we together? So, the devil is a smart guy. Or the battle, the Bible says that uh, um, we, we don't wrestle against flesh and what? Blood, but against what? Principalities, against wicked forces. So, don't think that the devil will just watch you. Oh, you want to be a wife? Then the devil will just watch you. Then you'll be married nicely. When you are not married, the demons, the witches, the wizards, the demonic work of the enemy in your life was at a level. But when you become a wife, my God, things will fight you spiritually. In your mind, in your spirit, things will fight you. And you must learn to grow spiritually. And I told you one of the surest ways to grow spiritually is to pray continually.
to study and practice the word of God continually. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, <laughs> Mr. Clerk, Mr. Kashia, <laughs> by November, you'll be promoted to be the branch manager of your bank. Okay, nice job. Get ready. Spiritually, you will fight battles. So grow spiritually. As a husband, you must grow spiritually because it is your spirit that will cover your children. Your spirit will cover your wife. As a husband, you must learn to grow spiritually to cover your children. Are we together? Like the mother hen. That is how it is. So any advancement you are looking at, you must grow spiritually. Hallelujah. And then every advancement also affects you materially. Materially. When I say materially, money, stuff here and there. Now, any level that you find yourself, it comes with its own financial obligations. When I was a schoolboy, the kind of money that comes to my hand is not the same kind of money that comes to my hand right now. So materially or financially, you must learn to grow. If you become uh, the member of parliament for your constituency, remember, when people are doing outdooring, they will invite you. When people are doing, I mean, naming ceremony, they will invite you. Funeral, they will invite you. You will go to places, and when you go there, you must release money. So don't think that you will just be aiming at advancement. Oh, God, promote me. God, elevate me. And then financially, you will not look at ways to advance your money as well. Your financial status must also what? Advance. Because every advancement comes with financial responsibility. If you are alone as a man, remember when you get married, now you are feeding yourself and feeding your wife. So your finances must what? Be upgraded. You must master your game. You must uplift your financial status as well. Hallelujah. So don't just wish to advance. So don't just wish. It's not a wishing matter at all. It's good to wish, but you must decisively, you must work towards it. It's something that you must work towards it. Hallelujah. So financially, materially, you must also advance, graduate your money to that level. A spinster, a single man, when you get married, your financial status will change. Because now you'll be taking care of your wife and yourself. When you get a child, you'll be taking care of three people. When you get another child, you'll be taking care of four people. Are we together? When you start your business, as you alone, you are doing your business. Yes, it's you alone. Yes, we like that. You are, you are alone. You have started your business on a small scale. We understand. But to get to a point, you employ someone. Remember, you must pay that person and pay yourself. So you see that finances has changed. Are we together? Woman of God, man of God, you start ministry with yourself, two people, three people. It will get to a point. Some people will count on you for you to give them something. Mm -hmm. It's not always that we give prayer. As men of God, sometimes we give money to support some people. Are we together? So any advancement that you are looking at, you are eyeing or you, you want to get to, remember, materially, your money must also increase. You must find ways to increase your sources of income. When God created uh, um, um, Adam and Eve, he gave them five sources of uh, uh, water supply. Are we together? You read the book of Genesis is there. Because God knows that one source of water supply can go dry. Are we together? So if you're a child of God, you must have different sources of income. Going by one source of income is deadly, is detrimental. It will kill you. It will frustrate you. The reason why a lot of people go on strike especially in Africa, is because most of us have only one source of what? Income. So if you go by one source of income as a man of God, one source of income uh, as a wife, as a husband, it will not help you. So you must get about two, three, or five sources of what? Income. Your talent can be a source of income for you. Your, your trade that you have learned can be a source of income for you. Anyway, that's not what I'm teaching. God bless you. So that is it. So uh, number three, it will change you and the things around you. Advancement, promotion, elevation will change you and the people around you. Oh God. You want to advance in life, it will change you. As a manager, you will not have time for yourself anymore because you need to catch the train. You need to go to uh, work on time. You need to uh, uh, schedule meetings. You need to meet with other people. My God, board members. Because every advancement comes with time schedule, it will change you. It will even change your sleeping pattern. The time you sleep, it will change a lot of things. And it will even change the people around you. It will even affect the people 
around you. It will affect the people around you. Sometimes people can even leave your life because of the advancement you want. There are some people that will leave your church because of the advancement you want. And you must be cool with that. Hallelujah. There are times you must behave like the eagle. Eagles don't fly with other birds. Are we together? Eagles fly with eagles. Are we together? You can't be an eagle and fly with a, a, a dove. No, 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 no. Eagles fly with what? Eagles. They fly with like-minded people. So there are times that people can live your life. Your wife can even leave you because of where you are going. Sometimes they will not see the bigger picture. Sometimes a friend, a colleague can leave. And you must be cool with that because every advancement that you are looking for, remember, it will cost you people living your life. There are some people that they will drop out of your life in order for you to advance. Are we together? Uh, I think Lot and Abraham got separated and Abraham advanced. Are we together? So if you want to advance in life, learn that it will change you and change the people around you. Don't say, that, oh, I want to be a manager. I want to be promoted. I want to be elevated. I want to uh, do this. I want to do that. I want to start my dream. I want to start this project. And then you will not think that it will not change you. It will change you. It will surely change you. That level you are looking for, it will change you. It will change the way you think. It will change the way you talk. It will change the way you behave. The way you do your thing, it will change you. It will automatically change you. Every elevation, every upliftment, every next level, every upgrade, any advancement you are looking for, wherever you want to get to, you want to climb the ladder of success in your industry, in your endeavor, whatever you are doing, remember, it will place a demand on you by changing you and changing the people around you. There are some people, the level you are getting to, you can't go with them. They are negative talkers. They talk negatively. They are complainers. They complain a lot. And they don't give you good advice. All those people, you must drop them. Because the advancement you want, you must go with like-minded people. You must go with people who think alike, who think success, who think promotion, who think encouragement, who think fruitfulness, who think abundance, who think prayer, who think wisdom, who think the grace of God, who see love, not people who see hatred and all that. Are we together? So remember, advancement will change you. Every new level, any new position will change you. Are you ready for that advancement? Are you ready for that advancement? It will change you and change the people around you. Remember, it will change your friends. People can be with you. You are a spinster. I mean, you were not married before. Now that you are married, you can't hang around with the same people. You can't hang around with the same people like you used to. No, your circle of friends must change because right now you are a manager. Not because you are proud. No, it's not like that. Because managers roll with managers. You understand? You can't be with people that idle around. You can't be with people that 24 hours a day, they do something fruitful for only one hour. No, 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 no. You have to be with people that do fruitful things throughout the day. So it means that there are some friends that you will drop them. Yes, you will be alone. And the eagle loves to fly alone. The eagle loves to walk alone. Why? Because in being alone, you find purpose. Being alone, you find a strength to fire, you find strength to focus, you find strength to follow your dream, to follow your passion, to follow your career, being alone. There are some places you can't go with other people. There are some advancements you can't go with other people. Prophetess, you can't go with other people. Let them go. Let them go. Don't hold any grudge against them. Let them go. If anyone wants to live your life, know that it's a sign that God is about to advance you. If your girlfriend, the woman you intend to marry, the man who told you will marry you says he won't marry you again, he will not date you again, you have begged and begged, you have told them you're sorry, you said what you have to say, and still they are living your life, keep quiet, trust your God, let them go. Because why? God knows best. Because you have done your bit, you have done your path, and still they said they are going. If people drop out of your life, as out of your life, don't feel agitated, don't feel bad, let them go. You are not proud. Just let them go and trust your God to advance your course. Trust your God to advance your capacity, your thinking, your mentality. Are we together? So the level you want to get to, you can go with everybody. You will surely go with some people and some people will drop. Are we together? So advancement, in a nutshell, will change you and change the people around. It will change you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. So any new position... Or new positions comes with new privileges and problems. Let me say this again. New positions come with new privileges and problems. 
<laughs> new positions comes with new privileges and problems. Don't forget this. Every new position that you want in life, you want your location to change, you want your title to change, you want your business to change, it's a new position you want and it will come with privileges and problems. Note that. Privileges are what? Advantages. There are things that people will give to you because of your position. There are some respect that people will give to you because of your position. But remember, when you are getting all those privileges, like a journalist, there are some places you go and eat for free as a journalist. Because why? People see you on TV. You are an actor. You are an actress. People love your movie and all that. They are all privileges. You understand? You need to sign autograph uh, for people and all that. They are all privileges. You are a celebrity. It's a privilege. But remember, every new position comes with privileges and problems. <laughs> new problems. But I know with God, you can solve all problems. And by wisdom, you can solve all problems. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. I'm closing my broadcast with this. The purpose of promotion. People think that uh, um, when you are being promoted, you are being promoted for yourself. It's not true. When you get promotion in life, you are being promoted for other people. You are not promoted for yourself. Now, when Jesus was given the name, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, all the way to 10, Bible says that when Jesus was given the name that is above every name, what happens? At the mention of the name Jesus, every knee shall bow or every knee bows. So it means that when Jesus humbled himself, went through the process and got the elevation with the name that is above every name. Number one, he was a blessing to us. It means that Jesus, his promotion, his elevation became a blessing for us. Because because of Jesus' promotion and elevation, now we can use the name Jesus and demons will bow. So it means that, number one, you must remember that your promotion is a blessing to other people. I'm teaching you the purpose of promotion. The level you want to get to, you are not getting there for yourself. It's a blessing to other people. Don't think that God will bring bigger money into your business for yourself. No. Fine, a little part will come to you, but the greater, the lion's share will go to other people. As a pastor, as a prophetess, as a woman of God, as a man of God, as a journalist, God calls you not for yourself. Genesis chapter 12, God says that he called Abraham not for himself, but for other people. Now we call ourselves the descendants of what? Abraham. Are we together? So number one, the first purpose of promotion, elevation, and advancement, as God promotes your life, God promotes you, you are working for somebody, now you have started your own business. Remember, God shifted you from that point to the new area, the new position as a CEO. Why? Because you need to be a blessing to other people. So God promotes you to be a blessing to other world people. So promotion comes for you to be a blessing to other people. You are not, an, uh, 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 you are not a member of parliament for yourself. You are not an IGP for yourself. You are not a governor for yourself. You are a governor for other people. So God promotes you for other people. Now, as men of God, if you ask, you line up thousand men of God and you ask them, why did God give them the gift that he gave them? As men of God, as a prophet of God, as a servant of God, any gift that, sorry, Sorry, any gift that I carry, I don't have the gift for myself. I have the gift for you people. I have the gift for other people. So every gift that I carry, by the help of God, I carry it for you people. All the gifts that I have, the teaching gift, the apostolic grace, the healing grace, the deliverance grace, the prophetic grace, any gift that God has given me is for other people. You too, anything that God gives you is for you to 